All right, let's give away some shirts. How many reviews? Doug, give away some shirts because we love people who leave us good reviews. We exactly. love those people. How many, how many do we get total? 11 reviews this week. Okay. Because we haven't called for it in forever. That's right. No, That's we okay. have not called for it. That's right. A little bit of a decline. So we're going to give away three shirts. First up is Ash Fit. Mm-hmm. Ling a ring ring. <laughs> I love that game. Ling a ring ring. You guys ever play that? <laughs> and Megan Del Corral. Oh. All of you are winners. Winner, winner. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks again. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we uh, give Adam a little bit more shit about running out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> on our way to the Spartan race, we talk about it Spartan. It was totally planned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We talk about Spartan racing and the mindset of obstacle course racing racers. Uh, we even talk about doing one or we talk about not doing one. And what type of fun <laughs> is that? Is that type one or type two fun? That's it. You're going to find out two. if you listen to this episode. Uh, we also answer some questions. We talk about how to maximize your time with a client when you only have a half hour. We talk about do genetics play a role in how your body Holds fat. We talk about the craziness. Get that on Insta story. Hurry oh, up, geez. Yeah. yeah, make sure you film oh, that. God. Oh, man. Ben's butt cheeks against the window there. Uh, we talk about the craziness of our friendship um, and how we trust each other and how that helps us operate mind pump. Flag him in. And we also talk about why I poo-poo all over Adam's journey to get swole. Also, lastly, we have a oh, starter poopers. pack program that's discounted almost 60%. This is, we have a lot of new listeners coming on right now. So, what we do is we put together what we would give someone to get started. It includes MAPS Anabolic, which is our foundational program, MAPS Prime, which has a self assessment tool so you can correct imbalances. We put the nutrition and fasting guide in there for the nutrition aspect of it. And then we give you access to our forum so that we can monitor you along the way. You can find this at mindpumpmedia.com. Come on, I'm talking to you. Yes. Come on. Yes. Bang. Yeah. yeah. These are the what is that? Like tears These of is that tears of sun? Things. It, yeah, tears of fears. No. Or tears for fears. No. Was that the no. song? Tears, tears of sun, right? Is that was that is? the song you Flocking guys were Flocking Seagull? <laughs> Flock of Seagulls. Flock, Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> was that the song you guys were Duran Duran? You guys maybe? were going crazy over in the yeah. car. I'm talking to you. Come on. Dang. Was that, that was the, really good. Was yeah. that our running out of gas song? Was that that? That oh was, my yeah. God. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Can we talk about that? Epicness. These are the things that I was, can do without. That's one of the that's one of the things that you never expect to happen. Yeah. No. It happened to me when I was like, you know, 16. You first start driving? Yeah. Yeah. In my old truck that had like no gas gauge. So you had to like calculate the I had to the push mile? it a couple times. Did Actually, you're... my battery died because it was just run, like my alternator died. So I was pushing my car just recently. Oh, and yeah. then then that happened. What the <laughs> hell, man? I think yeah. I put some juju on you did there. You, did, does your gas gauge work or were you calculating it? No. I. So what happens is it gives you me the distance till empty, right? Until it's like... I think under 10 or 20 miles, and then it just says low fuel, get gas, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that I had somewhere between five and 10 miles when that, when it, whenever it went off, which I didn't see. And when we were trying to get there, right, we we're trying to make it on time. So I was like, okay. So you're jamming, you're like throttling down. Well, I thought, okay, we might have like, I thought we were like a mile away when we ran out. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, if we can just get there, I can get gas on the way back out. Yeah. And I didn't realize that we were still that far. I away, wonder so. if it, is that the first time you've run out of gas, or is this happened with that first time ever in your entire life? Entire life. I've been in another car when somebody else ran out of gas. No way. But I've never ran out of gas before. That's well, happened I mean, to me a couple times. And I, I was, I mean, like I said, I, I knew I was low. I knew I was going to cut it close. But I thought we were, I thought we were closer, and I thought I could mm. make it. You know, so that was. We had a lot of weight. We were pressing it. A lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of testosterone. Yeah, a lot of glute glutes. power. Yeah. You Definitely know, an asshole move on my part. No, no. <laughs> you know what? It it turned. Here's the thing. Like it made it epic. Right? Here, exactly. Silver lining. Here's something I'm starting to learn as an adult. When shit like that happens, really, you there's nothing you could do. Like hindsight's twenty twenty. <clears throat> so I could get mad and be like, "Why don't you check it?" Whatever. Or I could be like, "Hey, we're all together." Yeah. 
Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's, let's make fun of it. Yeah, who gives a shit? And uh, we actually got some. I'm sure Taylor recorded some great content. I mean, oh yeah, we did our own Spartan race in the in the freaking weeds. <laughs> we did, yeah, on the I side was of the jumping road, jumping over all kinds of shit. I did some uh, shirtless yoga. Got bit by ants. You did. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. People pulled over. It was that you know that, that is a good Justin flashed them. That is a good I point, did. right? There's what, what's the what's the quote? There's no such thing as big problems. Only problems that we make big. You know, so I think that uh, you say that at someone's funeral. Hard work. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, it I'm, is only good if you're I'm working sorry, hard. I'm sorry, your yeah. husband died, yeah. but just remember, there's only yeah. problems you make big. So. Well, I don't think I, think, I don't <laughs> think your husband dying is a problem. That's more like a tragedy, right? <laughs> <laughs> tragedy. But really, though, like the little little things that happen like that, I feel like uh, we make them so much bigger in our head when you stress because, like you said, you don't, you can't control it. It's yeah, you ha- make it worse. Yeah, exactly. Are you only going to make that situation worse if you were to get angry at each That's other? That's wisdom, though. Like, we're all like, you know, younger self. I'd have been like, ah, oh. you know, you'd be raging and right, like stomping around, so all angry. stupid. No. And then we finally, then we, and then Doug went and got gas with the Uber and uh, came back, and then the fucking gas can. What do they put on that? And thing? then we made a humongous puddle that. Uh, what do they put on that? Thing? Would have exploded. So many stupid regulations. They literally make it impossible to freaking operate the thing. It's so. It's just let it pour. That could, have, that could have been very frustrating, too. It could have been infuriating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was so, okay, I was so soaked in gasoline after all that. <laughs> That's why I like, I, I sort of like step back. Oh, it you took, don't need too many people in one, you know, collective saying, hey, man, do it like this. Hey, man, do it like this. Like, no, 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 no. One person's got to figure it out. Yeah. No, and you were pretty self-aware. I remember you finally caught Sal after a while. Like, okay, I, th- I think it's enough. I think we. Yeah, been yeah. Right, I was like, right. don't hammer him on that, bro. Like, it's we've it's, already it, we're ramped up here. We're up here. Yeah, I was I mean, like, this is let's perfect. Pull, let's pull out. I was like, this is perfect content. Yeah, I know because we could have kept yeah, just jabbing, jabbing. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, it was a good time. But you know, then we had a great time. We actually made it to the Spartan race for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Which was cool, and we we had get we had uh, press passes waiting for us, but we didn't need them. <laughs> no, we just went right in, fucking like, out of, just blazed right through the race. Just drives through yeah. the race. <laughs> they were like jumping over us, yeah. and drives right into where I don't know who's where we were. Uh, that, here yeah, in the back of the frickin- that's a little life hack for you. Like when you guys are when we go places, or this is for our audience, right? If you're going yeah. somewhere and you're trying to get in, or you're get you're, something laminated, you get a lanyard, act like you're supposed to be there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just act like you're supposed to. <laughs> Most people give themselves away like you're not supposed to be here or you're doing something you shouldn't be doing because they're like looking they're around. Nervous. Like, yeah, they're nervous. They're looking around. But when you walk in like you own the place, like, yeah, no, we're coming here. Yeah. We'll be over there. We're going to talk to that guy over there. Yeah. He's expecting us. That's how we Leon- just pointed at a guy. It, what's that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? Catch oh, Me If You Can. A- epic movie. True story. Yeah. One of my and, favorite movies. And that's how that got people like, oh my God, how did you do all that stuff? It's 100% assumptive closing. Yes. You just walk in and just like, you act like you're supposed to be there. I feel like Kyle Kingsbury to be there. is really good at that. I, I bet you Kyle is a yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. genius like at that. I say, amazing at it. I say that learn something from the it. takeaway close is the number one close, and then the assumption close is the second best close. Those two close, I feel like, are the best. Like, takeaway yeah. close, because everybody wants what they can't have, so takeaway close is always number one. And then yeah, because the we, we literally drove up, and the dude who's checking cars and stuff, because you're not supposed to park in there unless you're like the press or a vendor... And we just pull up and we're like, uh, oh, we're supposed to go where the where the press is. And the guy's like, oh, 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 oh that way. So we just <laughs> just drove in, <laughs> made ourselves the, at home. One of the guys laughed at us. Though, he laughed at the <laughs> camera because it's all small. He's like, oh, yeah, your media? Yeah, oh, yeah, look yeah. at that little Because you have a DSLR, yeah. right? We have a little yeah. DSLR and it's it's covered by like fucking Fox and ABC. There's like fucking drones. I like just grabbed like a tripod and was like, yeah, I got a tripod. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're official. We're media. Yeah. It was cool to watch um, the race, though. And then they had a little kids version did you see that did you guys see that yeah yeah that's awesome i didn't realize how big these this like thing is and it's not just spartans well, how inclusive one. it is too ocr like, is all big, dude. different very, ages very big. you know kids what's older. ocr obstacle course racing oh is that the, the, yeah. the category the acronym so spartan is the biggest one right and then i think tough mutter is like the second yeah biggest but i think one? it's a there's a huge discrepancy between the two of them what do yeah. you mean like like the size wise yeah it's like it would be like comparing. It may have been competitive. Twenty four hour fitness to golds back in the days, you know, like when twenty four hour fitness was like in the billions of dollars, and the second biggest gym chain was like hundreds of millions. I see. It's like not even. It's like double more than double. Yeah, I can see the pop- why it's so popular. When you're there and you're watching it, you can feel the energy. Yeah. And you can see the teams, which is really cool to see people kind of push themselves to do mm-hmm. this thing. And you know, talking with uh, Joe, Joe, and of course talking with Ben and other people like. There's a lot of because we talk a lot about the the damaging effects of super extreme strenuous forms of working out 
And yeah, that's definitely not how you want to train all the time. <clears throat> However, there's an a emotional, psychological, and even I think spiritual uh, piece that you get from really exerting yourself mm-hmm. to your max. So, from a physical, you physi- peak. I mean, it's all it's all part of the process of training is to like lead up to a peak and then you come back to, you know, like a more reasonable training throughout the rest of the year. You well, know? it puts things in perspective. I think Joe said it best. Like when you're a business guy, you know, let's say you work in an office and it's just, you're stressed out because your emails and maybe that your coworkers an asshole and it's traffic and you got all this stuff to do and you go home and the kids don't want to go to bed and whatever. And you're just like, my life's so stressful, right? And then you go do one of these races where you're like, I could never climb that wall. I could never swim that you know, water. I could never do these things. But you train and you push yourself and then you find yourself throughout the race multiple times feeling like you're going to break, but you're like, no, I'm going to push myself. Yeah, you press through it. Through it, it kind of, it almost resets your perception of, mm-hmm. of challenges. And of course, if you want to take it to another level, people get even more extreme and they go do these you know, these, these wilderness hikes and all that kind of stuff. And when they come back, they, they, they all talk about how, yeah. you know, everyday stress Everything is kind else of be- is just little things. Did, did, did yeah, Ben trivial. share with you, uh, when he stayed the night at your house last night, the, his, the most challenging race he's ever done? No. So he, I'm, it's funny. We haven't, we didn't talk to Joe Decina about it, nor did we talk to Ben about it. Uh, I got a chance a little bit, uh, off air to talk to Ben about it was, um, Joe Decina does this, um, called I think it's called the Death Race, and oh, he de- he, it's yeah, a private one. That. It's private on yeah. its property, right? Mm. And <laughs> Ben's so Ben's done the whole Navy Seal Week, right? The, the, the what's it called? Buds, the, yeah, Buds Week or whatever. Mm. So we've done Buds. Wow, so he went through Buds. He didn't actually go. Th- oh. So there's something that that they they emulate it, right? This okay. like it's very similar. It's down in San Diego, also. Mm. It's seven oh, yeah, days. Yeah. He goes Seal Fit, it. And like they do something that like there. that. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. remember the name, and, and I forgot. Mark Divine, I think. I think so. Like so. He's done that, and he says that, you know, and he's like, not to take anything away from, because it's different, the SEALs are carrying guns, and there's way more going on, he says, but mm-hmm. he says, the the scariest race I've ever done was the death race at Joe DeSina's house, and he it's like crazy. He said it was uh, 38 below, and you literally get like a little like, you know, what are those called? The start the fires, the little uh, flint. flint. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a little flint and that's it. And you have to, and it's three, it's 72 hours, I believe is what it is. 48 or 72 Holy hours. Shit. And that's all you get. Like you get a flint and that's it. And he has all, and the, the part of it is this obstacle race where you have to do like just a bajillion burpees and you have all these things that you have to accomplish and you get like a frozen fish and you got to cook it and eat it. That's what you get for survival. <laughs> he said it was... He says it was so oh it was so crazy. Like someone, a couple of people got frostbite on the first night, and he says that was one of the most you know mentally and physically challenging races he's ever done in his life. So you have he to, talked about it on on London Real, so, so you, you YouTube ha- London Real. You have wow. to ask yourself like the following question: Is like if you look at it from a logical standpoint, you think to yourself, why the hell are you doing that? Like why are you yeah why are you putting yourself through all the stuff when we have all of these incredible comforts yeah. of modern life? Like, why would you, number one, put your life at, at risk? But even if it's safe and you know you're not going to die, like, why would you put yourself through that strenuous test of physical and mental? Because it obviously is, it's not enjoyable while you're doing it, right? And I think the answer is because uh, there's a part of us that needs that. I think people have discovered that. And and it look, I, it means something different for everybody. It could mean for some people, it could mean literally just going camping mm-hmm. for a few days and just that's roughing it or whatever. But there's a piece of us as humans where we kind of need that a little bit, that reset or that challenge. And uh, when people discover it, it's almost like they become addicted to it. And the people who I find so far, my own personal observation, the people who I find that seek that out the most, who do it kind of. Not cons- not like a, a frequently, but do it consistently. Like maybe once a year, they'll do something like that. Mm-hmm. They're some of the most successful people I've ever met. Yeah, It's not like, you know what I mean? Like my buddy who, you know, works nine to five at Walmart or whatever. It's always like my buddy who's an entrepreneur who's built this business or this other guy who is a scientist who's just got, like these are people who are like uh, like high achievers. Well, Ben was saying that, to seek it out. Ben was saying that last night when we were talking. He had a, actually a statistic to back that up on 
uh, people that do those triathlons and stuff like that, the the percentage of them, like how much their income, I think their average income is like $170,000 mm-hmm. a year mm-hmm. is what most of those guys do. Most of them are in their mid to late 40s and have accomplished a ton business, <clears throat> business-wise, and now they want to have like optimal. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You know, you're stretching out your capacity, like you're, you're sort of uh, read – Reacclimating to to a new level, uh, uh, whereas everything else, like you know, you get back to doing your your daily sort of habitual things and stressors and like you know workload and all that. It just seems like a lot less you know demanding, See, and so you can just you can handle it and now, tackle it. For me, I wonder: is it because they naturally have that personality and the tendency to tr- to challenge themselves, so they're constantly just looking for challenge, or is it because these people are so performance oriented or optimized oriented where they do things that they find give them measurable <clears throat> progress and results mm. in terms that's of a, that's a good question you know yeah. I, would, I would speculate yeah. it's the first one you think it's just something that they just they just I seek think, it out i think because of the whole what, what ben was saying about the type of guy that it attracts type of male and female that it attracts i think that they've made all the money they need like they were they did that you know what i'm saying and that was obviously if you're Making 170 plus a year, you've you've made it pretty well. You're pretty you're considered upper class, right? So you've mm-hmm. you've busted your ass. You've got a pretty, uh, you know, money is less of an you issue. You got a motor, already. yeah, right. Yeah. And so I think that you know you've kind of proven that to yourself. Like, okay, I can provide right really really well. Now let's see what I can take where where I can take mm-hmm. my body mm-hmm. and what's the most elite level I can push just it. Put right? ourselves on but, the, on the skittle. That's but, just but speculation. then they keep. But no then idea. see then then it's like what they keep doing it. You know what I mean? They don't do it once and like, okay, I did well, that. Well, then I think it becomes addicting, right? Because like, well, it, that's what I mean. I yeah. wonder if they're doing it. This would be a wonderful thing to dive into. Like, I wonder if they're motivated to even try it because that's the kind of person they are. But then they keep doing it because they're like, wow, this is making me mm-hmm. more effective at life, at business. Yeah. At you know what I mean? Like they've they've kind of figured out a way to. Because think about it this way, like... Well, I'm sure it's a huge endorphin rush, too. You know, at the end, like, you're just like, wow, like, I just did that and I accomplished that. Like, what a gratifying experience. Well, scale it back a little bit, right? Let's scale it down a little bit. Like, exercise, just working out in a gym consistently. I could see how some people are motivated to do, to do it because they're hard workers, but they definitely get benefit from it as well um, in their everyday life. Like, I've had so many clients that were business men and women who I've trained who one of the first things that they notice is that they're better at work. Like I had one guy, I'll never forget, uh, very, very successful. I looked up to him. He was self-made, had no formal education. I think he even dropped out of high school, but then he ended up becoming a millionaire through becoming a serial entrepreneur, just a wonderful man. And after I trained him, and he hadn't worked out consistently for years, he comes and hires me, I train him, and he would tell me like, he goes, I tell you what, he goes, I like being fit and stuff. He goes, but what really keeps me doing this is just, He says, I'm better in my meetings. I'm better when I meet other people. He goes, I'm just more effective at work when I work out. And so I wonder if a lot of these high achievers continue to challenge themselves with these like physical feats of the, you know, these races, obstacle races, or, you know, where they go on the wilderness. Because it keeps them mentally sharp. Yeah, because it makes them better. So, like, shit, I'm getting a lot out of this. I could see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sure. What about you guys? Could you see either one of you being that guy? I can definitely see. A benefit from no, going no, 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 outside no, 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 of my comfort not, zone. Not, not that. Do, can you? Do you? Can could you picture yourself being that that guy to go do those? things? Yeah, I, we all agree that there's tons of benefits behind it. I'm not denying that. But Once a year, could yeah. you? Could yourself? Could you see yourself? You, you know, if you had asked me that question a few years ago, I would have said never. But I had an experience last year when I did my road trip when we all met up at Ben's house for the first podcast we did with him, and uh, me and my girlfriend had a, uh, we had a camping site in Lake Tahoe and I told the story on a podcast a while ago, but what we were supposed to do is drive to the lake. You rent a kayak, pack your kayak with your tent and all your gear, and then kayak Lake Tahoe to this camping ground that you could only reach through boat or through kayak. And for number, first off, that was way out of my comfort zone. I never did anything like that. Like kayak in the middle of a lake to camp. Like, okay, I did it because, I said, okay, I'm going to really try pushing myself and I'm dating this new girl and I don't want to look like a massive pussy. (laughs) So we do it and we get lost. We actually pass the camping site and we keep going and we ended up uh, kayaking for like eight miles and it gets dark and we're lost and we're stopping at these different points and we're totally fasted and we've got gear on our 
kayak. We finally get to the wrong campsite. We have to hike two miles, and it would became this entire endeavor. And after I did it, the uh, the way I felt afterwards, and she describes it as type two fun. I've never heard that term before. So type one fun is you're having fun while you're doing it. Type two fun is you ha- after you're done. You remember it later. Then you're like, like fuck, that oh, was that awesome. Was great. Yeah. And so when I came, it like really kind of changed me because I realized like, well, that wasn't that bad. I totally did. And I'm really proud of myself. And there was no, like the plan went to shit and we just totally got lost. And, but it was kind of awesome. So now I can see maybe, like I never would have considered it, but now I'm considering like, I don't mind trying something. Like, nothing crazy. I'm not going to do no fucking death mm. race. Like I, I might do something like, hey, let's go hike 10 miles and camp, uh, which is way outside of my, camp, my comfort uh, zone. Yeah. But I might want to do that. I might want to try that. What about you guys? I don't know, dude. Mm. I don't know. Um, I, I definitely would not say, I definitely wouldn't say never. Uh, for sure. I mean, uh, there's. I've put myself. I've done things now that I would have thought I would have never done before. I would have never thought I would get on a bodybuilding stage in my life. That would never had a desire for that. So, I've already done things that I know that um, is out of my comfort zone. So I, I could see myself doing that for like a challenge. I don't think I could see myself ever getting into it. And I think a lot of that is. You know, I did you do a lot of it? You did a lot of backpacking, didn't you, as a kid? So I, I mean, I did. I camped. I camped every summer, and we boat and we kayaked, and I did all that stuff. Like so, I was and by all that stuff, I don't mean like I did OCR races. I wasn't doing that. I've done things like Muddy Buddy, which is nowhere near the the level of of Spartan races, Mm -hmm. but it's fun. It's challenging. So I, I semi into things like that. To, but to get into it at the level that some of these guys are, like Ben or or, or some of the competitors that we see, I don't that I don't see because I still am you know I'm still aesthetically driven and and the physique that you that you have for that isn't the physique that I like for myself. It would just counter what your current exactly goals are. it would it would counter what I what I like to do and I I feel like that's the only that's the only knock I have on it is. It's not advantageous to have a bunch of muscle on a bunch of bulky muscle on no, your body. No, definitely not. Yeah, your body. I mean, if you're training to be good at that, which I would want to do, if I'm going to do it, I want to do well at it, right? You would. Hmm. I'd end up. I'd shrink up into this kind of lean looking, you know. Runner. You'd have to. It'd be totally yeah. counter to what you're doing. Yeah, now. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm. That's the. That's why I don't know if I. I would be into it. You know. Yeah. I think it's more. For me, it's more of a mental discipline. Like I, I could look at that as. I like, feel like it's more in your wheelhouse than totally. it is any of ours. Well, yeah, and it's it. It definitely reflects a lot. Of, I've I've put myself through a lot of like extreme situations, like with hell weeks and double days, and uh, I've been camping where we only had a kayak and we had to catch our food and all that shit. And like we portage, it was in Minnesota, which is something I, like I would love to do this with you guys, but I know you know you guys might not be into it. But um, like we literally like build a build a, a campsite and you and you you pop up tents and then you go out in the lake and then you fish and you catch your food and then you go to the next lake and there's like a ton of lakes and so you're just constantly going and you're getting a a barrage of like different kind of weather and you know it's crazy and you you can drink right out of the lake because it's so fresh uh but anyway like we, we did that for a whole week and i mean i was fucking like it was brutal and it was hard, and but I always remember it. So I look at it more as like an experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not fucking it, like it's not necessarily like I'm like I crave it, you know. But when I get through it, like I always get something out of it. So it's type two fun. Yeah, it's like I know I would enjoy it if I did if I did the race. I would enjoy it as I'm doing it. I I honestly don't feel like I would want to prep too much for it. Uh, and, and reason being, like, so even when I did uh, the the football game. Prior to that, like I didn't even train to, to play in the football game. It was like all like reactive and like, you know, I was in the moment. I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best I can do right now. Um and and I did and I put my whole body into it and threw myself out there and I was I was just like just beat up and exhausted, but I played pretty well. Uh, but it was after I was done. I was like, "Oh my god!" I had like the biggest rush. Of- what, what's your thinking behind that? Are you just wanting to see what you're capable of right now without yes specifically training for it? Just I want to like- see where I, where I'm at, like what I could mentally overcome. It's not for me that kind of stuff is not physically 
I'm not I'm not into physically preparing like myself. Like you don't for give it. a shit like oh if no, I'm going to no. take first or second exactly. place. It's just like I could give what a rat's what, ass what can I push that. my body to right currently right now yeah. without like putting... what can I overcome in in you know like if all this shit's getting thrown at me and like can I muster up the ability to to overcome this? And uh I want to train the way I want to train and and uh benefit my body of course, but you know, for me to properly train for something like that, like you said, it would kind of change your body. You would look more like an endurance athlete, you know, like I'm not interested in that at all. So see, I could see that. See, I could see getting me to do that like that. Like, let's say we, we signed up for <clears throat> some race. Just jumping into it. Yeah, yeah. Just jumping into it. Training the way I always train right now. Just maybe you know, doing a mobilized maybe, movement, yeah. all that kind of stuff. That would I'm actually, not, that would actually be I hilarious. I give a shit what place I get. That would be funny. Cause you'd have three fucking well, meatheads. You'd be surprised yeah. though. Like, so, uh, my, when we, when I did muddy buddy, this was quite a, it was probably 10 years ago. It was with my oh. three other best friends and we, we did it in teams, right? So muddy buddy is designed to be in partners. Like one guy starts off on the bike. One guy starts off on the run and at every obstacle course you flip flop. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. So you take out the guy, obviously the guy on the bike is going to get to the obstacle course first, right? So he gets to the first obstacle course, gets up, drops his bike or your bike, your guys's bike. He does the obstacle course. Then he takes off running. So then you show up like 10 minutes later, you, you do the obstacle course, pick the bike up, then you go riding and then you end up kind of passing him mm-hmm. while he's running. And then you just do this back and forth mm-hmm. the whole way there. So, and I did, uh, so I was talking a lot of shit to my other two friends who was competing against us that, and eh, I'm not going to train for it. I was still, I was 25 years old. I think I partied the weekend before and I'm like, yeah. I, tra- I train hard in the gym. I train enough. I train hard enough in the gym that I felt confident that I had the, uh, the, the mental capacity to push myself. And I actually rolled my ankle with a level three sprain halfway through the race. Oh, oh, no. And my and my best friend and I that were on a team still beat <clears throat> the other two guys. Mm-hmm. And they were training like leading up to it. Mm-hmm. But in in their defense, they weren't as much into fitness as I was. So I was already, you know, I was in pretty good fitness, like lifting weights and I was supersetting and doing a lot of shit like that, like high intensity training, but I wasn't doing any sort of real cardio to get ready for it and yeah. we actually still won so you'd be surprised like some of that stuff how you could still pull it through you could, it, yeah you could you could grit your way through yeah if it's short enough if it's a short enough i mean a, a marathon i'm, a, I'm gonna get my maybe, ass maybe oh, of course maybe we'll just start with like a hike you know what I mean? <laughs> we'll do some hiking <laughs> that's so extreme you know what I'm saying? we'll just do a hike real quick and then uh, see what we'll, well, see speaking, what we'll of, see. speaking of time let's, where's that bird at douglas <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Our first question is from Jay Swole how do you maximize your time with a client when you are limited to a half hour? Oh, I like that name. Mm-hmm. This is becoming more and more common uh, where trainers are training people at the half hour for a, for a half hour for, for a couple of reasons. It cuts the cost of personal training because personal training one-on-one right. uh, can be Pricey. quite expensive. In fact, it's probably the most expensive fitness type of thing you're going to do is any type of one-on-one because it's there's you know there's no other class or whatever so and personal training can probably range i don't know uh, anywhere between 50 to 150 dollars an hour i'd say would probably be the averages uh so a half hour it's less expensive um and people uh you know they 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 for commitment wise sometimes people are drawn to that like oh cool i can do a half hour whereas an hour sounds like a long time now, here's what happens during an hour of personal training with a client. When I'm doing an hour of personal training, there's a nice chunk of it where I'm doing mobility and correctional stuff before we get the workout going. I've had clients that I trained for a half hour, and the way I've done it is I've taught them how to do a lot of that stuff on their own. So they show up to the gym. I'm, already, I'm still with another client, and I have, let's say, 30 minutes left with my client or 20 minutes left with my client. They're doing that part on their own. Then when I see them, we get right to the workout. Mm -hmm. And if you really examine your workouts, most workouts for most people, most average people, the actual working out part is about 30 minutes. The mobility and correctional stuff uh, can take up another, you know, 20 minutes or so uh, Mm -hmm. in a workout. So 
that's the way I would maximize it. So let's say I got a new client. That's assuming that this person is doing it just for financial reasons and they're not limited by time. Because he actually says how to maximize your time with a client you are limited. Oh, you mean like they just have 30 minutes Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. So I think that's what you have to ask yourself is what's this question? Because I too, I depending on that, I would answer this diff- different. Yeah, that's a yeah. good that's a good point. Because if someone just had a half hour and they literally just showed up and mm-hmm. said, train me for 30 minutes... A lot of it would depend on their goals, but yeah. this is where I'm playing with intensity a little bit more. Mm. Uh, the shorter you work out, the more intense you can work out, and vice versa. The longer you work out, the less intense you can work out. So those 30-minute workouts might be a little bit more intense depending on yeah. what the person's goals are. Uh, I still give people stuff to do on their own, though, like when you're at home and when you have yeah, time. Yeah, I, I think that personally what I would do is I would I would pick the most complex movements that I feel the client needs me there for. For example, I'm probably going to teach them the deads, the squats, the overhead pressing type of movements in that half hour with me. And then like Sal said, I'll give them homework for bicep curls and, you know, stuff that you don't need a lot of training. Yeah, for. yeah, bicep bicep curls and tricep pushdowns. I'm I'm pretty confident they can put it together themselves and not hurt themselves where there's so much going on mechanically with a deadlift or a squat that that's where I'm really going to, that's where I'm really going to earn my paycheck, right? That's where I'm going to really be able to help this person out with their mechanics and addressing any sort of imbalances and why their squat or their deadlift may be off. So I would, I would spend a bulk of my 30 minutes in that. The, what I wouldn't do that I think a lot of trainers are tempted to do, which is, oh, I only got 30 minutes. We're so they circuit, circuit, the fuck out of, circuit the fuck yeah. out of them for 30 yeah. minutes to, to maximize their calorie. There's a temptation there as a trainer, too, because, yeah, you want them to get, you know, a good sweat or something out of it, you know? Right. And, and that's a, it's just crappy. Yeah. Like, that's cheap programming. Right. You know it, what I mean? It is. It, and I think that they're going to ben- they're gonna truly benefit more. I mean, I think they would benefit more from focusing on two exercises, like the squat and the deadlift or the yeah. squat and the overhead press for the entire 30 minutes than they would be taking them through a full body circuit just so you could say, oh, I touched every muscle mm-hmm. group because a squat, first of all, works the entire body when you think about it. So doing that and getting them good at doing that and whatever whatever mobility movements they need to do to address and fix that, I think there's so much more carryover long term for them, mm-hmm. for you as a trainer to teach them and get that down really well. That's a good point. <clears throat> That's there, a very good point. Than there would be in just, you know. Yeah hammering them in a circuit. I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I think the young y- young trainer would do that. Me when I first started, mm-hmm. I would probably have, you know, 5 to 7 exercises all set out in a little square area and I'd be like, "All right, you know, push-ups, squats, you know, you know, bicep curls right into, you know, dips like it would be yeah. this circuit." I like that. Two two like exercises with like the compound lifts like because yeah, they're going to get a lot of benefit from just the technique of how to master those specific movements that will carry over to like all kinds of other stuff later on. But yeah, like, cause you know, there's, there's part of that too. If like they're new, like what you want to do, like versus what they need or what they want versus what, what they need is, right. is, is, you know, that's a struggle because like, if you just take them through an entire mobility, you know, process for like the first month, like, are you going to retain that client? I don't know. It's going to be tough. You know, it's a tough sell, especially they only give you 30 minutes. Right. Uh, so yeah, I like that. Maybe mixing in kind of both, like how to, how to prime, like right before the squat, how to prime right before, you know, deadlifts and like kind of teaching them techniques of, uh, how to benefit that whole process, but yeah, keep it real simple and, and and focus on those like you know maximal lifts. Yeah, those are great points. I fully agree. I think as trainers, we have to be careful to not judge our value based on how much shit we did, because a lot of that's a, that's a lot of what happens when you first become a trainer is you think it's in all your, volume. You yeah. think in your head like, oh man, all we did today was squat and overhead press. I hope they they don't think I'm like not worth their time or their money. Mm -hmm. And so what you end up doing is you end up trying to wow them, which is as much shit as possible because what you're trying to do is you're trying to prove to them how valuable you are when in reality you're just questioning your own value. Um, So yeah, intensity is like that too. Like you see trainers who just, they'll judge their value based on how much they can beat someone up. And so those are kind of two pitfalls. Personally, I'll be honest with you, I never liked training clients for a half hour. Yeah, it's tough. Because if I'm training six half-hour clients, it's hectic as fuck. I've got way more clients uh, in a shorter period of time, 
It and, never ends like right on the dot, you know, like you're talking and not, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's muddy. I don't get a whole lot of time to connect with the person or really observe their body the way I want. I mean, you can do it, but it just, it becomes, I feel like personally, I, I, I lose a little bit of my value because I just don't spend enough, as much time you know, with them. So I didn't do a whole lot of it. I don't know, but did you guys ever do a lot of this? No, Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but I did. I did my fair share of half hour sessions. And I think the ones that I, that I would recommend it to are actually more the advanced. Oh, like people you've already trained. Yeah. So when I've trained for a really long time, I could do a quick half hour, like, Mm -hmm. you know, show them the movements that I want them to be doing or take assess what they're doing. And it's more actually me just kind of checking in and them checking us checking back in with each other. Um, it's definitely not something that I would want. I would not recommend it for like a first time client that is just bought, you know, 30 half hour sessions from me and they've never really personally trained before. I'm like, that would be a, that would be not ideal. I think I could benefit them more through, you know, 15 full hour sessions. Very good. You know, that where I can spend a full solid hour coaching and teaching and. and Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather do one, one hour session a week than two 30 minute sessions a week. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And that's tough because I'm sure, you know, you're going to have clients that want the, the other way. I think this is also good because we're talking about trainers client right now but this there's a lot of things that carry over into just a person right like what if you are somebody who you don't have a trainer but you only have 30 minutes in the gym i think the same rule applies on how i would choose to train myself so if i only have 30 minutes you know i might i might just do squats like i've done that many times many times I've thought like, oh man, I've only got 30 minutes, but I'm like, you know what? I'll get in there and do, you know, 10 sets of squats and then call it a day. Yeah. And 10 sets of squats is a pretty fucking good workout. It you is. Know, it's not a bad workout whatsoever. And it's got a lot of carryover uh, than me actually setting up this little circuit that I'm doing all these other little isolation movements, you know, thinking that because I'm sweating and I'm moving a lot that like that's really good for me. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. Mm-hmm. That there, and this is a, I think a lot about what Mind Pump talks a lot about is, man, the the overhead press, the barbell press, the deadlift, and the squat are such great movements, and have you and you can I feel like even fifteen plus years of training myself and being a personal trainer, I still am you know working on the mechanics of my squat and deadlift and always tweaking and getting better and treating it like a skill. So. You know, getting better at those things have so much carryover for building muscle, for burning fat, and just overall mobility and performance that I feel like that is a great way to spend a 30 minute workout if you've only got 30 minutes. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Wood P91 is asking, do genetics play a large role in how your body holds fat? Wood P says that man boobs run in his family and he can't seem to get rid of them. Mm. Ooh, man titties. <laughs> Those are great. Yeah. Uh, genetics plays a huge role in how your body does everything. I mean, yeah. a lot of things. Right. So it, in terms of fat storage, it plays the largest role. So there's lots of things that can influence, we're discovering, where you store body fat. Uh, body fat storage patterns is mm-hmm. what a lot of people say. Um, ge- genetics is the vast majority of it. So I'm going to tell you some things that can change how you store body fat, but don't count on them making these dramatic, drastic changes. And they're not really like spot reducing exercises. No, there's no sp- spot reduction. There's actually a little bit of debate as to whether or not spot reduction actually happens. But even the people who say it happens, the studies that they show, it's such a minute, like splitting hairs yeah. effect that you're not going to be able to tell. 
the big thing that my, uh, besides genetics, the other thing that will influence how you store body fat is your hormones. Mm-hmm. As your hormones change, you will, uh, they, they have studied this and found that it will change how people store body fat. For example, in women, uh, high cortisol levels um, at the wrong times, because we do want cortisol spikes in the morning, but just throughout the day, uh, has been shown to increase fat storage around the midsection. Um, and in men, it's shown to increase uh, visceral fat, which is the fat around your organs. In men, higher estrogen levels or lower testosterone levels results in more fat storage in the uh, chest area, so man boobs, um, in the arm area, and in the lower body. Almost like your fat storage is patterning closer to what a female would, would end up mm. storing. So they'll find that when men's testosterone levels drop uh, est- or estrogen levels are real high, they'll have more fat storage around the thighs and their butt and around their chest and the back of the so arms. it sounds like basically focusing on things that can make you more anabolic throughout the day would be a good way to approach this. Well, I think when you look at when people, uh, men and women, store body fat the way that, uh, like when women store it the way that women typically store it, or healthy women typically store it, it, from an aesthetic standpoint, looks better, right? Like, picture a woman who's storing body fat like a man. Like, imagine a woman who has a really big gut and skinny arms and skinny legs. It's not, it's going to look, probably, you know, dare I say worse than if a man stored that way, only because women don't typically store fat that way. And the same thing for a man. Like, what if a man got, gained lots of body fat, had kind of a, you know, a little bit around the waist, but mostly around his butt and thighs, and around his chest. So he had kind of an hourglass shape, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the key here with this is to optimize your total health. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, your hormone profile is going to be more ideal and your fat storage is going to be more reflective of how it's kind of supposed to be. So you can get more of an aesthetic, I guess, look to your body. So I'm going to give you something that I found extremely fascinating for myself when I went through. Uh, this process of fat to fit that um, I won. It, it gave me a whole new perspective for clients when they ask questions like this, the belly fat, the low back fat, those stubborn areas that people just can't seem to get rid of. They, they always talk about, man, I've been in great shape and I just can't seem to get rid of the man boobs. I can't seem to ri- get rid of that little pooch at the bottom of my stomach or that fat but you know, between my legs or whatever. So people get these areas, right, that genetics play a huge role in where we store this. And I never dealt with this myself until I had carried myself at this higher body fat percentage for a long period of time. And I was really fascinated. I'll never forget, fascinated in a bad way. I was very frustrated, to be honest. When I went from 20% body fat all the way down to 7% body fat, I was shredded. And yet I still had this little bit of a pooch on the bottom, my lower ab area. Mm. And I remember telling Katrina, like, what the fuck? Like, I've never been this lean in my life before. I'm, I'm, I'm in better shape than I ever was, even as a high school athlete. But yet I've got this little pooch that I didn't have when I was in high school. And that kind of tripped me out. And I was like, this is this fucking sucks. Am I going to have this forever? And it wasn't until the third show that I completely get rid of it. And it's the area where, again, I've put on some more body fat. So, again, I have that that little pooch area. And so what I've been able to share with clients, Katrina, friends, family with this, this type of a question is it's amazing when you push yourself to a new level of low body fat, because what will happen, the body will look for fat. And if you keep pushing to a lower, lower, lower percentage, it'll be forced to eventually get that shit. You've just got to go to a level you've never been before. And each time you do that, it seems to chip away a a little bit more. So each time I I drop down to the single digit body fat percentage from seven and then five and three, and then the lowest I think I ever got was about two and a half, three percent for a show. And then finally it eliminated it. And then when I went back to a caloric surplus, I had to make sure that I was strength training and building muscle. So then those extra calories went to building muscle mm. versus getting stored as fat on my stomach. And this is real similar to, you know, when I first met Katrina, she always struggled with, she has, she has kind of a square look to her. She has wide shoulders and she has kind of wide hips. And so she can look boxy. 
And even when she was a, she was a collegiate level athlete and she'd tell me like, you know, Oh, I just, this is my, my genetic frame. I'm, I'm square looking and I'll never, I'll never have that tapered waist. And I said, well, no, you just, that's where you store your body fat and you've never pushed yourself to a low enough body fat percentage to actually force the body to have to go get that body fat because you've always gone to a certain point and burned off everywhere else, but you still got some stored there and you've never pushed the body beyond to where it has to go get that body fat, burn that up and eliminate that. And the first time that I got her to completely understand that and did that, she the, uh, this light bulb went off. And so since that moment, and this was about two and a half, three years ago, you know, she's been slowly building a physique that has this more tapered shape to her. And the way we've done that is by shredding her to the lowest body fat percentage she's ever been in her life beyond beyond a point that she'd want to carry herself long term because we're trying to eliminate all that body fat. Then not falling off the diet, not falling off training. Then when she starts to increase her caloric and take back up again, she's building, she's training, weight training still. So those extra calories now go to building muscle. And that's really how you shape a body. But genetically, we all have these areas, these stubborn areas, but they can't, you can get rid of that body fat. And if you push the body to a, a, a low enough body fat percentage, trust me, it will get wherever it's, wherever there's body fat, it will eventually get it because you can get down to these low, low levels. Now, I don't recommend somebody keeping themselves at a extremely low body fat percentage for a long period of time. But you can do this and it, and it is possible and it does take a lot of work and it will probably take you multiple times of leaning out before you get all these areas of stubborn body fat that you know. You're not stuck with that for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. But it is possible and that's kind of the point there. So yeah. It takes like extreme kind of work. It does. It, and, it, and it tripped me out when I the, for, when I had to deal with it the first time. I never had that. I never. I always had abs as a kid and I never had this little pooch or anything. And then when I got, when I carried, a, when I got a stomach on me, and I actually was 20% body fat and then I got leaned all the way out. I had this little pooch at the bottom and I was like, what the fuck? This yeah. is crazy to me. Why I'm lean. I got abs right now. I'm shredded. Like how, how come I don't have, why do I still have this? And it's just because I still got, when you're at 7% body fat, 7% of 200 and something pounds is still a decent, there's still, what is that? Still uh, 15 pounds yeah. plus of fat on my body. And guess what? And the 15 pounds Get, genetically, my body likes to store it in these areas. Now, if I were to keep going, my body would eventually it goes away. It'll eventually go away and burn it up. It's just most people have not pushed themselves to that. And the other thing too is the appearance of fat uh, or, or the appearance of being leaner. A lot of that depends on how developed your muscles are as well. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was always very difficult to get a six pack to get the the the, the visible six pack abs. It took me a long... I would have to get really, really, really shredded. And even then, you could only see them if I really flexed. Like, I was never able to get that, like... You know, you see people who are super lean and they got, like, six packs and they don't even, they're not even flexing. Mm -hmm. And I was so envious of that. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't do it until I uh, figured out how to really work out my abs properly. Like, I started training them properly. I actually started building them and doing resistance, you know, uh, based exercises my abs started building so they could stick out a little more and then boom, six pack. Yeah. Not only did I have a six pack relax. You treating them like a muscle. Yeah, I treated yeah. like any other muscle. Yeah. It was like a light bulb went off for me. It's why I developed the, the no BS six pack form. It was based on that. And when I uh, stand relaxed, now I have a six pack, but it's not because I'm leaner in my abs. It's because I have ab muscles that are more pronounced. No, that's so true. And if I were to give this person some you know bro type advice, because I can't tell you the exact science of why this, why our body works this way and how, why this happens. But if you get to a, the lowest body fat you've ever been, and then you put a lot of emphasis on building your chest on the way back up when you increase your calories. Aesthetically, so, it's going to look a lot better. Yes. For aesthetically, sure. it's going to... It becomes get, a priority yeah, uh, for your body. Yeah. You start to build some, like Sal saying, good muscle in that. Build a bunch, shred as much fat as you can by getting the lowest you've ever been in your life. And then when you go back to putting, go back to a mini bulk, what we would do, increasing your calories, you put a lot of emphasis on building muscle in that area. It's all proportions. Look, I, I have, uh, you know, I have a certain amount of body fat on my arm and it's pretty lean. I have a pretty lean arm. I've got some striations on my bicep and my tricep. But if I take all the body fat that's stored on my arm that makes it look lean and I put it on a one-year-old's arm, which is tiny, they're going to have a chubby little arm. It's all proportions. I'm using you know, a kind of an extreme example. But 
if you have more muscle on your chest, that body fat, even if it's the same, will appear to look less because yep. it's a smaller percentage yeah. of the overall chest mass. Our next question is from the Lady Bowers. In the craziness of your business, do you ever reflect on how lucky you are to have each other's friendships? How rare is it to have the trust you have with one another? I think about this Ooh. a lot, actually. I think about it quite a bit. I've, friends. I've never trusted any um, partners or coworkers uh, as much as I trust the gentleman uh, in this room right now. Part of that is, a big part of it is the integrity that I witness um, you guys, ex you know, exemplify in your regular life. Like, I see the integrity you have when you deal with other businesses, when you deal with your families, when you deal with your friends. You know, when you make a commitment, you stick to it when an opportunity where you could lie would benefit you and it would be even a kind of a joking, funny lie or whatever. You still don't. You're honest. And you could tell a lot about people by watching how they 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 just act in everyday life and how they talk about other people. Like, mm -hmm. you guys don't talk shit about other people that you wouldn't tell them to their face. There's none of that behind the back, like baloney kind of stuff. So that's th the first reason why I trust the hell out of you guys. The second reason is I fully trust uh, you guys to do an excellent job especially when I'm not myself. Like I know, and I haven't been in very many situations like this where if I'm feeling shitty for whatever reason, life circumstances, and I'm like, oh crap, we're going to suck because I'm not at my best. Mm -hmm. I don't have that thought. Like mm -hmm. I suck right now, but I feel so confident that, you know, the team we'll pick it up, is yeah. going to pick it up and it's, it's not going to skip a beat. Mm -hmm. And it is a very... Um, it was interesting at first to be in this situation because I've never been in a position like that. I've always been the one mm -hmm. to be the one to rely on. I've always been that guy. And it, it's given me the space to not have to be that all the time. And it took me a while to actually adjust to it. But it's, it's this is how rare it is. I've done several businesses. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 22. I've managed uh, health clubs since I was 19. I've been working since I was 14. And I've never been in a situation like this. So yeah. in my lifetime... This is the once, one time I've ever been in this in this particular situation. Yeah, I can definitely echo a lot of those points. I mean, um, especially on the part, you know, like you guys carrying the show and carrying things. And, you know, if I'm not at my best or if I have things come up or, you know, like I just know you guys, like you just have the integrity and you have, um, you know, just just that that same hunger that uh, is so rare to, to kind of come in, take charge, lead. We're all leaders in a different way, which is really weird to me. Because like, like you said, I've done so many things myself that I can manage and I'm very efficient at managing myself. And then people kind of just kind of, I used to just kind of lead by example, right? And then people would just sort of fall into place underneath me. Um, but it, like you guys are at that tier where it's like, um, you know, you manage yourselves, but you also lead. And so that's something that, you know, I've, I've benefited from because, you know, you guys have a little more of that leadership, you know, quality that is unique to where you're not overstepping what I do, but at the same time, you know, it benefits the whole. And, uh, like the integrity thing to me is everything. I can't work with people that don't, like, I don't trust, or I don't know, like have good intentions or are out to, uh, put other people out of business and, and, and do things with, you know, malintent. Like, I just can't be a part of that. Like, I will just immediately remove myself from Well, that. you're already typically the skeptical type as it is, too. Yeah. You're not one to just be like, hey, come on in, <laughs> be my friend. I don't really <laughs> like leaders. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> honestly, I've avoided them for even on teams. Like, so it's interesting because I've been on a lot of, like, teams, and I'm a team player, you know, but at the same time, everybody knew to leave me the fuck alone. Like, like all my coaches... <laughs> They didn't like after a while, like, okay, we're not going to, you just go practice and do your thing. Like they would just let me literally practice like on my own or like bring a group of guys over and we would do drills and stuff, but then we'd watch film and they'd break it down and they'd see like, you know, it doesn't really work for them to coach me on all those points and stuff. They're just like, okay, you, you got this, you know? And I do like, that's, that's me. Like I, I want my own thing, but like, I feel your guys's like critiques and your, insight is very valuable to me which is new you know and so it's hard it's it's kind of like uh 
is a little bit, but like it's me now realizing that it benefits me more to listen and like uh, absorb that and, and and look at it as like this totally like benefits you know what I'm doing. Uh, that's been revolutionary for me. So yeah, it's awesome. Character and ego for sure, man. I think that um, these guys, everyone's character is just, you know, you talk about integrity and stuff. I just feel like, you know, everybody kind of lives by this mantra of nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And I feel like each one of us care so much about the success of the business and each other uh, more than themselves that it bleeds into the business. Mm-hmm. And it's just really rare to find that because most people are selfish. And I would even consider myself a selfish type person. But when it comes to business and the success of the business, I care more about that than I care about anything about myself. And I think that each one of the guys here are the same way too. Nobody cares about a title. Nobody cares about airtime. Nobody cares about limelight. Nobody cares about being more famous than another person. None of, none of that shit matters to anybody we have we have a a message we have a goal we have things that we want to accomplish we all know that getting there together is going to be 10 times easier than one of us doing it and we we totally blindly trust the others and their abilities cuz they're fucking good at what they do mm-hmm. i mean and i think that where we're at in our lives was so important for that to work out like katrina and i talk about this all the time too like i don't think even her and i would have worked in our relationship had we met 10 years ago, like we, and we've talked about this before about mind pump. Like if we were all trying to get do this 10 years ago, where were we at in our personal journeys? I don't know if it would work the same way. I think we all had to evolve into these guys that were more selfless. And that's a, that's a, and I used to tell people as trainers this all the time that, you know, being this, the, being a trainer or being in a leadership role takes an incredible amount of confidence and humility at the same time. And that's such a fucking juggle, man. Not a lot of people can do that. You tend to have one of the, either you have someone who's like super humble and everybody loves him because he's just a humble guy and just great to be around, but then he's just kind of weak because he doesn't have that strong, confident leadership side to him. And then you meet these super strong, confident leaders, but then they're kind of fucking assholes and they're cocky and they have that side to him. And I think that you know, all the, all the guys in here have this ability. They're extremely confident where people border, borderline would call us egotistical or cocky, but it really isn't. There's a ton of selflessness that happens uh, behind scenes with everybody in here. I think everybody's just extremely confident and humble at the same time, which makes for an, an incredible team. And I think we all do a really good job of recognizing that. I mean, it's crazy you asked this, this question to be an answer right now, literally less than 24 hours ago. Justin just sent a text message over to our thread of just, you know, thanking the rest of the team for, you know, carrying, carrying the, carrying on what we needed to do. And he couldn't be there. And instead of us, you know, oh, mad that he couldn't be there or him being frustrated, oh, he can't do it without me. Or it's just like, I trust these guys to do what we need to do. I can't make it. And we, the, the, we keep the the band plays on Mm -hmm. and, and, and also recognizing that instead of just letting it happen, not talking about it, he addressed it, pointed out. And I feel like we all do that in all situations is that I think that's an area too, to that people can take away. And, and I think we've talked about this on the podcast a long time ago, how important it is for men to tell other men how much they love them, how much they respect them, how much they appreciate them. And sorry, like it's that for a man, it seems like it's so fucking hard for men to do that. And learning to do that as a young adult and to the man I am now today, it's taken me so much further in business to be able to do that. And I believe that everybody here does a really good job of doing that with each other, of, you know, pointing out the things, their strengths and thanking them for the work they've done. And, and even when we get into it over something like that, like immediately expressing our, our love for each other and respect for each other, like, you know, just a lot of guys are uncomfortable doing that. And I think the men in this room are very comfortable with that. And I think that speaks volumes mm-hmm. with the the success that Mind Pump has had is ha- that ability to do that. Being, just- being hard headed is takes less strength than, uh, knowing you did something wrong and apologizing fact. So Mm. I think a lot of guys think, Oh, I don't want to be weak Mm -hmm. by apologizing. That's not weak. That's actually strength. It requires way more fucking strength. I can very easily, if I fuck up, just say, fuck it and just be proud. That's easy. The hard part is going to the dude 
you know, and telling them like, you know what we were arguing about? You're right. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, you're right, dude. I was totally Fuck, wrong. That's Apologize. hard. Yeah. Very, it takes way more strength to do that. So if you want to be a tough guy, a real tough guy, that's the way you do it. Yeah. Next up is Pablo Sue. Why does Sal seem to poo-poo Adam's journey <laughs> yes, Sal. to get swole again? <laughs> yes, Sal. <laughs> so a big part of that is that uh, we tease each other. We yeah. we just fuck with each other all the time, and it has to. It's all of us. So I don't. It didn't. It could have been anything. Adam could have said, "I was gonna. I'm gonna do. I'm yoga. dying my hair. I'm dying like, my yeah, hair. Yeah. Whatever." And well, I'm gonna. We're gonna tease come him. after you. Yeah, I'm gonna tease him a little bit. Um, and so that's a big, big part of it. The other part of it is when uh, the we all have the same uh, understanding and respect for total wellness, but that doesn't mean we're all the same. It just means we respect it in a certain way. And each of us kind of has a different, um, not role, but just a, uh, we're into it a little differently than each other, mm-hmm. which means that I, at one point, might be more into you know, the wellness, intuitive eating, and Adam may be more into the macro stuff, and maybe Justin's doing more intense, you know, hit type style training. And it, it's going to be different. And having that uh, that debate and talk about it and – poking at each other it makes for good fucking podcasts mm, yeah. it just really does because there's people listening who are thinking what i'm thinking and there's people listening who are thinking what adam's thinking yeah. and the only way that we're going to address those things is if we ask those questions and have legit discussion and debate about it and uh there isn't anything about uh you know adam's journey to get swole or whatever you want to call it that I think is stupid or wrong. Uh, I mean, the guy knows exactly what he's doing and he does it in a very healthy way. There's nothing that I would disagree with at all. It's just, uh, it's a lot of people find it very, very interesting. And there's a lot of people who identify a lot with me who hear Adam say that and will probably be like, oh, you know, bro, whatever. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to say it out loud because they might identify with me, but guess what? They're going to learn some shit from what he's doing right now because there is a lot that uh, you can learn from learning how to track and learning how to manipulate certain things to achieve a particular aesthetic goal. That knowledge yeah. is going to benefit your total wellness. Well, I think each one of us, it's important that we we go through these like periods where we challenge each other's way of thinking. You know, Even if it's like, God, we're on such a healthy path now and everything is so in line with health and wellness. And, you know, there's a message there completely that resonates with people and it's it's a good message. But, you know, what are some other counterpoints? What are some other things that we um, we've been like ne- like hesitant to talk about or, or like put ourselves through in a long time or, um, you know, where there's merit in all kinds of different ideas? Uh, obviously we've honed in on a, on a good message, but you know, it still needs to be challenged. And I feel like that's why it's important too that like Adam will pull himself out and get back to, to focusing on, you know, muscular development and, and building his body out to look a specific way because uh, people can do that. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it, if anything, it, it it's great. It's great for men- mental discipline. It's good for uh, making yourself feel good. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good it's going to do for your body to challenge yourself with that way. That's why too, like oh, like the obstacle course racing and all that shit. Like I really like that would resonate with me. You know, where I want to put myself under the fire again. You know, and that's a challenge, and, and it's important to do that. Uh, as well as, you know, being mindful and present and, uh, you, you know, have this holistic uh, lifestyle in mind. But it's you got to you got to kind of weave in and out. You can't just you can't just stay homogenized. We can't just all be one thing. No. And the bottom line is we talk about what we're into. So if you follow Mind uh, Pump yeah, exactly. for longer than 10 episodes, you will literally hear at the moment when we're recording what we're really learning about and we're into. Yeah. Um, so it just, it's just, that's just the way it is. So if I'm into something, I'm going to talk about it a lot and I'm excited about it and I'm passionate about it. The same thing is true for, uh, you know, for both uh, Justin and Adam. But, you know, there's another side to this and I'm, I can guarantee you Adam's going to bring this up is that, uh, you know, you have to be very careful with just isolating yourself into a box and identifying so strongly with something that you forget everything else. Mm-hmm. Because when you do that, it becomes dogmatic 
And from an objective point of view, just physiologically, that's how you develop imbalances, whether it's in your, per, you know, in your in your mental game yeah. or in your physical game. Yep. If you just get stuck in one thing, so it's great to venture out and do all these different things. Yep. Well, and let's be honest, a part of what uh, motivated me to get back in this was exactly that. Was I felt the tune of the show was I mean, and and some people loved it, right? Like we were getting compliments. Oh, you guys have, you know, I feel like you guys have turn into one you know like you all started a certain way and you guys have become so much alike and you're all one and the then there was the flip side that people were starting to be like oh the we are more holier than thou and that we are all self-righteous and that this is the way and like you know everybody needs to be this way and i'm like no 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 like don't I, d- I cannot stand to be put in a box mm-hmm. because because I share or because we share our journey on the show openly and because we were currently sharing a lot of the similar similar type of ideologies does not mean that we're dogmatic about it and we this is a better than another way. And that's part of what motivated me to go this direction is because I do love training for aesthetics. I still stand by that. It's no different than episode one. When I would come out and used to say that I'm I'm all show no go. Like I still, <laughs> I still, I still like to look really good. Like that's a it's a major motivator for me. And I don't I don't identify with it that it, it it's an insecurity of mine. I'm very comfortable with uh, who I am and in my own skin. I loved going on this total wellness journey and intuitive eating and intuitive training and really working on mobility. I thought there was a ton of good takeaway from it. A lot of great practices that I'm implementing this time around when I'm getting shredded. So, you know, I'm already seeing it right now with my food rotation. I posted on my Insta story uh, just today the all my foods that I ate in the last seven uh, seven days, and I can honestly say that in past times that I've gotten shredded, there was never a, as uh, much emphasis on the the rotation of the foods. Oh, and- the variety that you're eating right now is pretty pretty awesome. I mean. I recommend if you're into counting, and this is coming from me, uh, who I never do it this way, but if you're counting macros and really being specific with what you put in your face from an aesthetic standpoint, watch what Adam's doing on his Insta stories because you'll see him hit his macro and calorie targets for his goals, but it's such a wide variety of foods, vegetables and meats and you know fruits and different things that uh, he's not doing it the way that other people do it where it's the same food all the time mm-hmm. you know or the same three foods that he rotates it is a very healthy approach it's, yeah. it's awesome well it's in, inspired me and i've been saying this for some time now that i want to write this diet i want to write this diet that i believe would be fucking awesome and epic because i think so many diets fail because they're restrictive and they tell people don't do this and mm-hmm. so it's a, a short period that people go through and I want to flip that on its head because there's so many foods out there that are nutrient dense that our body benefits from that are actually it's very challenging to get them all. Yeah. And instead of actually Getting doing that rotation, that color diversity and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah I'm curious to to see how you put that all together. Man. So I don't know if you saw it yet, but I did. I posted on the Insta story. I snapshot. I actually wrote out every single thing that I rotated through this last week. And uh, and there's some things that I missed that this week coming forward I want to make sure I rotate in there. But it it's actually I'm having to go after food. Like instead of me like oh I can't have that or oh pass on that. I'm looking at my day like okay yesterday I had fish and I had beef and I had this. So today I'm gonna go bison and I'm gonna go you know steak and I'm gonna do eggs and I'm gonna go this route or oh this day I'm gonna completely not worry about getting as much protein. And if I do get it, it's going to come from like seeds and this. And so I'm kind of going through all of that right now and trying to formulate this, you know, you know, reverse type of uh, thinking of dieting instead of trying to restrict myself. It's more like I'm trying to go after foods and hit my targets. But I do want to caution people this is that what I don't like about sharing my, you know, macro counting and my journey and stuff like that is I don't like people to go like, oh, this is the formula or, oh, I this is what... Do it exactly like you're doing it. Do it exactly like I'm doing it. What I'm trying to share with people is, you know, this is kind of how I figure things out for myself. Like, so I'm getting DM'd like crazy and I'm doing my best to respond to all of you. 
and I and people are asking me like, oh, so are you ketogenic? Are you following what you know, twenty this and fifty that? And but no, I'm not doing any of that. What I'm doing is I'm paying attention to the foods that I'm consuming. I'm paying attention to my activity level. I'm trying to find my caloric maintenance, and I'm trying to to see where that's at first. And I'm allowing certain foods in there. Like I'm not eating perfect whatsoever, but I'm making healthier choices and I'm seeing how my body responds to that. And then I'll slowly make adjustments over time. And I think that's the takeaway, not, oh, I'm taking in, you know, you know, 60% fat and 40% this and 20% that. No, that's the takeaway isn't that. And I'm not, I'm not following something like that. I'm actually just kind of following, paying attention to what I gravitate towards and then I'll make subtle adjustments. So you'll get to see that through this journey. And I just, I, I urge people not to hang on the exact number of grams or calories or things like that, but pay attention to how I start to put things together for myself to get myself to my ultimate goal and how I make those decisions. Excellent. Hmm. 30 days of coaching available from Mind Pump. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer, you do it on Instagram. You can find us at Media. Uh, we have personal pages. Mine's Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin's Mind Pump Justin. And lastly, our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV, has a new video every single day. So sometimes we talk about exercises and techniques and movements and uh, you know maybe adventures like when we ran out of gas. These are all filmed and posted on our YouTube channel. Go check it out and subscribe. Again, new video every single day. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.